Hey, what's happening guys? It's Multimeter Monday. And what I have for you today is from Anang. And it is the Q1. This is the push button multimeter with the reverse LCD screen. Interesting enough to take a look at. Sells for about $30 from China. Let's see what's in the package. Thermocouple. Set of one-piece cheapo test leads. And you always get these with the anning. They're really nice. Different sorts of tips, different types of test leads. And a nice manual. Here are the specifications. You can pause and read them at your leisure. So we'll put it through its paces. So we'll tear it down, see what it has to offer us. But first, this small disclaimer. If you are a professional and use a multimeter in your day-to-day -day life, by all means buy the fluke the fluke has the input protection that you're going to need to keep you safe in your day-to-day -day life and it is a proven rugged multimeter i have no argument buy the fluke if you're a guy playing around at home low voltage dc circuits even testing your outlets any one of these multimeters will be fine disclaimer number two i am testing the meter and what that means is I'm not going to use the cheap leads that come with it. I'm going to use good leads, Probe Master gold plated leads. That way we eliminate any resistance that the cheap thin leads have and we're only looking at the performance of the meter. Yeah, I know the meter doesn't come with those leads, but if you want them, they're low price. All right, let's start off with a size comparison. Here is the 8008, the smallest meter. There's the Q1 kind in the middle. And there's a full size meter. So the 8008 is about not quite five inches. The Q1, about five and a half. And the full size meter, six and a half for you continental types. What's that? 12 and a half centimeters, 14 centimeters, 17 and a half centimeters. So that gives you an idea of the size of these guys. Now let's talk about the batteries. The 8008 and the 8009 are AAA battery units, as you can see there, which I like. Uh, we have motorcycles driving by the house tonight. Now, the Q1, I also like as it uses AA batteries. I like the AA and AAA batteries better <clears throat> than the meters that use 9 volt batteries because they have a higher energy density. The 9 volt batteries and meters like this are made up of a bunch of button cell batteries and just don't have a lot of capacity. Of course, everything I say here is strictly my opinion. Now, the screen. Um, it's interesting, but it's kind of ugly. It's not evenly lit. This is relatively bright here in this segment. This segment is significantly darker. Now, let me turn out a couple of these overhead lights here. Maybe make it easier for you guys to see. This segment is bright. This one is dark. It's just not even. Nice two-part molded case. We've got some, I don't know, probably ABS with an overmold of a softer material. No trouble getting into it to change the fuses there. So let's get started with our tests. And we're going to start out with 
resistance as soon as I find the proper leads. So for our resistance test, we are going to use these 18 gauge silicone four millimeter to four millimeter banana plugs. And we will go to our resistance range. And let's start, let's start high, one meg. That is right on. Next, we'll go to 10K. Not bad. 1K, sorry for bumping the table when I pulled those out. 1K, okay. And 2.2 ohm. 2.42, okay, so no trouble with the resistance. Everything is pretty much spot on, perfectly happy there. Now we're gonna test continuity. And I'm gonna start out with, where are we at, are we on continuity now? Diode and continuity. I guess diode and continuity are the same. Okay, we're going to start out with the probe master leads. And the reason I'm going to do that is to show you that we're just testing the meter. There's the kangaroo Dave test. Now that's not as good as the 8008 or the 8009. But it's still pretty good. Now let me show you why I insist on testing them with good leads. Now I'm just going to grab some cheapo leads that would come with any of these low price multimeters and you're going to see a difference. See that? Let me take off the protective caps here so that we got some more meat to work with. And I think you can see why I do it. Look, there's nothing. And you might think that this meter doesn't have a good continuity setting. Well, it doesn't have the greatest, but it's not bad. What was causing the problem is these leads. There's probably oxidation or some other contaminant on them that is causing the problem. Also, the wires, not as thick as the probe master leads. And that's why I do it. Not to say they're better, but to show you that we're just testing the meter. All right, let's move on to, hmm, diodes and LEDs first. So let's start out with a standard silicon junction diode. And you see we have a drop of 0.54 volts. Here is an ultra-fast diode, 0.47. And finally, a Schottky, 0.205. Reads them quick, reads them good. All right, let's test some LEDs. Let me make sure I'm in the proper direction, and I am not. So we're going to swap those around. All right, there's an ultraviolet LED. Yellow. Green. Uh, purple. And red. And it lights them all up. Very nice. Uh, the 8008 and the 8009 do not light up all the diodes. So that's pretty nice. All right, let's go to capacitors. And let's start out with a 0.1 microfarad. Not bad. One microfarad. 
a little low, but it reads it fast enough. I mean, that could be manufacturing issues. And 100 microfarad. Okay. So this is what you expect in a modern digital multimeter. Relatively quick reading of all of these values. Good accuracy, well over 98%. Let's go on to voltage. For voltage test, I have the, uh, what is this, AD5, LTH. Voltage standard, it's hooked up to a 12 volt battery, so we have a nice stable voltage. We'll start with 10 volts. Very nice down to uh, seven, <laughs> seven and a half volts. If I can get my big chunky fingers to do what they're supposed to do. Okay, no problem. The bar graph's updating pretty well too, but we'll check that separately. Five volts. And 2.5 volts. Yeah, no problems with any of that whatsoever. Let's check the update rate on the um, bar graph display. We're still in voltage mode. And I've got it hooked up to my power supply, which I'm just going to ramp up and down. Ideally, the bar graph should be updating faster than the display, but I'm not seeing that so much. So it works, but it doesn't update any faster, which is somewhat disappointing. On a higher end meter, that bar graph is going to update two or three times faster. All right. So... Let's go to AC, and I'll plug that into my outlet here, 126.6, 59.95, that's nice. See, we, we have three separate things on the screen here. We have our voltage, we have a secondary reading of frequency, and we have the bar graph. Very nice. Now, TRMS means true RMS, which means not only is it giving us the true RMS reading of a sinusoidal waveform, but also the true RMS of a square wave. So that is very nice in and of itself. All right, next, let's check out the current. So I have my constant current source set up here. And we're going to move the probes over. Now watch what happens when we move the probes over to the amp milliamp range. It automatically switches over. I think that's a pretty nice feature. So we'll hook it up to the probes here. And we're set for 1 milliamp, 1.1, 2 milliamp, there are six, 12 milliamp, I got my probes hooked up backwards, don't worry about it, 20 milliamp, let's go back down to one milliamp, actually let's go even lower. Point one milliamp. So if we swap this over to microamp, there you go. I'm giving it 100 microamps. It's showing 84. Eh, it's a little bit off on the microamp scale, but still not too bad. Let's go up to uh, 200 microamp. Hmm. 
Hmm. Not showing anything else. Okay. Interesting. The microamp scale, not so great. Test out the uh, non-contact voltage. So we'll press the button here. This is our NCV mode, EF electric field. I have my little LED powered desk lamp here. There you can see the bar graph. And it beeps faster when we have more field. So that works very well. I like that a lot, nice feature. Let's go with the thermocouple. All right, so here's the thermocouple that comes with it, probably a K-type up in the end of that probe. Yeah, it feels kind of chintzy, but you know, whatever. Although, uh, <laughs> it does remind me of a joke. What's the difference between an oral and an anal thermometer? Well, the taste. All right, so let's power it up. And we'll go to temperature. I like that. So we have 24 degrees C or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Can we swap them around somehow? Not that I'm aware of. There may be a way, but uh, I'm not real worried about it. Now, somebody in the last video uh, when I did the Meter K MK01 asked me to put the probe into a uh, glass of ice water. So I'm going to go get a glass of ice water and we'll be right back. Okay, I've got a glass of ice water. I'm just giving it a few minutes to chill. I figured in the meantime we could test the heat source. I have this not so great heat gun, but if you watch the video review on the heat gun, you'll know that it got up to around 380, 390 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see what we got. Noise warning. She's climbing. Well, now that's significantly hotter than it got yesterday. 600 degrees. It barely got to 400 degrees when I did that other video. Curious. Very curious. I wonder if the other thermocouple was off or if this one was off. Although I feel that this one is probably relatively correct because it is uh, 76 degrees here in the room and it was reading, uh, what, 77 just a minute ago. So, interesting. All right, one glass of ice water. We have relatively chilled. And in goes the thermocouple. And the temperature is rapidly falling. I'd imagine somewhere in the low, low 40s, I would think. Wow, 60? Okay, that's right on an ice cube. Very interesting. I would have thought 41, 42 maybe at the most. There, it's still dropping. Kind of hard to keep it on the ice cube, so to speak. But I'm trying. Let's see where we get. Okay, well, close enough for government work, right? And she times out just perfectly at the end of our test. Well, friends, it is now late in the evening, and I am going to call this one for tonight. But don't you go away, because when you blink, it will be tomorrow through the magic of video editing. And I will be back, and we will tear this thing apart. Because we want to know what's inside, right? I know I do. See you in the morning. All right, we got her open. So let's have a look here. Let's start at the bottom. You can see our input terminals here the uh, 
current input is on a separate little daughter board. Now I don't know how well you can tell in here. Let me see if I can bring a little bit more light in might help. There we go. There's our current shunt. Kind of small, anemic. And from the color of it, it almost looks like brass. It doesn't really look coppery. I hope it's I hope it's copper, not brass, because brass isn't not that great. Okay, we have a couple of resistors in series here from our main voltage input. Over here we have another resistor, and here this one marked R30 has just been jumpered out with solder. Now that's kind of interesting. Now if we jump over here to this big old IC, this is a Holtec HT, uh, one, HT1621B, which is a 32 by 4 LCD driver. This little guy here I'm not quite sure of, it's probably an EEPROM. There's the brains of it hidden under that little bloppa gloppa black goo. Now this guy here, this is our voltage reference. Let me see how uh, we can get in there a little bit better. It's an inner sill and uh, an ICI or an ICO, I forget, 8069, it's 1.2 volt voltage reference. But take a look at the soldering on that. That center pin is soldered well. The outer pins are not. And I'm not sure why they would do that. Now, the pin layout on this chip here goes like this. One, two, three. One is not connected. Two is our V plus. Three is our V minus. And it's got a body zener backward across it from two to three. Yeah, poor soldering job on that. I'm not sure what they are thinking exactly. Now here is the only PTC. I mean, I'm glad to see one. But that's the only one. It's kind of small. And I do wish it had been down here. But I can see why they did that. There isn't a lot of room. Now here is a relay that they're using to switch this thing on and off and switch between the different modes with the keypad instead of having a range switch. Here we have our um, fuses. Sorry for the bumpy camera work there. There is a 10 amp 250 volt, 200 milliamp 250 volt, and these are um, what look to be like 20 millimeter by 5 millimeter fuses. And also have a little diode there for protection. Beeper, other than that, it's just a bunch of passives. Interesting construction. Let's uh, take a look at this board next to one of the other ANANGs. All right, looking at them side by side, this is the 8008, and this, of course, is the Q1. And you can see just by the overall design look of it that they have the same parentage. Now, I do like the larger fuses. These little fuses like this can be a little bit of trouble to find. Now here on the 8008, you can see our input coming in going through there through the couple resistors. Here you see it going up here all the way around, probably going into that relay. But overall, there's not a whole great deal of difference. I mean, yes, on the Q1 we have this LCD driver because it's a lot more complicated. But otherwise, they're very similar. I, mean, I wouldn't call them identical, but similar. I mean, if you look here, you see fuse diode. Fuse diode, fuse resistor, resistor. I mean, we come in here, we see resistor, resistor, and then we're going up here. So, very similar construction, all in all. I think we've dug into this about as far as we can really go. And my overall impressions are the construction is very nice. All the A name meters construction 
is very nice. I think this was designed by a committee who were tasked at finding a way to sell more meters. So they said, what can we do differently to make this meter stand out from the other meters? And somebody said, well, we can reverse the LCD display. And somebody else said, well, we can add a bar graph. And somebody else said, hey, let's do away with the range switch and put in buttons. And they all put their ideas together and turned it over to engineering. And they came up with this, which is, by all accounts, a fine meter. But it falls into a strange place. It's not the sub-$20 8008. It's not a $100 meter. It's not a $50 meter. This is a $40 meter that really has no place. There's no reason for it. It's a good meter. But it's odd. I don't know. That's my impression of it. You guys have watched this. What's your impression of it? I want to know. Is it worth $40? Um, I ordered this, by the way, from New Frog in China. It arrived in just over 15 days. And if you are one of my patrons here in the United States, sorry, this has to be in the United States, and you're interested in this, contact me on Patreon. Leave me a message. Let me know you want this. And uh, next Saturday... Uh, let's see what day that might be. So today I'm, I'm making this video. It is uh, July the 7th. Let's say, uh, yeah, let's say the 14th. I will, I will randomly choose one of my patrons to give this to. That's the benefit. One of the benefits of being a patron is I give a lot of this stuff away. All right. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Huge thanks to the patrons for supporting the channel. That's it. I'm out. Peace.